Hello, Carrots here again. Welcome to my Decorate a Dive Lot video. We finished building the dive lot in the previous video and now we're going to have a look at it and decorate it. The surface sharks and the dive boy are all we've got at the moment. I sent my little mermaid out there but it wasn't much point in that because I needed to go into build by mode. As you can see when she looks around it's flat. That's because we flattened the lot when we were making it to get it to go below the water. The actual lot doesn't isn't level with the surrounding terrain it's for two reasons. One is we set input terrain to minus 0 0.1 and the other reason is we flattened the lot before we did the terrain thing so it isn't... I expected it to be a little bit below the level of the surrounding terrain because we did a minus 0 0.1 to get the flag down and in parts of it that is exactly what I saw. However the terrain, this is the reason why it's so difficult to place an existing dive lot because the terrain down there is unpredictable and in this instance we have one part of our dive lot has landed in terrain that's relatively shallow but it drops off suddenly into really deep water which makes it a bit difficult for me to decorate this one because you don't want to go too deep. So you get your terrain tool, that's where I start anyway, it's up to you how you start. You get into your build mode and use the terrain tools and I haven't yet discovered the really deep patch but we'll get there. Look how far above the surrounding terrain this dive lot is. I want to get it down so it's level with that terrain. So this is going to take quite a lot of work so I will stop showing you from here on in because it's up to you actually what you do with it and how you decorate and you just experiment. I ended up making it too deep in places and I had to come back after I tested it because it was just too hard working with it in the deeper because I made some of it a lot deeper than what it needed to be and it was too hard getting down there and staying down there with the mermaid. It's good to have little dips but not huge dips in your dive lot when you do this with your terrain. Of course, you've, I push the terrain down and then I smooth it. But, I mean, it's just because that's how I like it. doesn't mean that's how it's got to be done. Next thing, I'll start showing you the other menus. Here we go. The terrain paints. When you want to paint the ocean floor, filter on Island Paradise. And you don't have to f look through all of the different terrain paints you've got. It's under sand and gravel, I think it is. That You can see the one that's highlighted anyway. And choose the ocean floor, which is the only one that's available for Island Paradise when you filter on Island Paradise. That makes it easy to find. That's the terrain paints. And that's the terrain paint when I've applied it. So it's just a repeating pattern that you put over part or, part or all or none of your dive lot floor. Depends up to you whether you like it or not. Now we can place some rocks. Again, I'm only showing you where these things are. You choose the order in which you do it. Now, there are some rocks that, if you filtered under Island Paradise, there's some rocks there. Also, a few of the rocks that are from other expansions and also from the base game you might be able to put them under the water as well. If you want to place something under the water that doesn't actually go under water you can still get it there with move objects on. I don't do that because there's plenty available for me for my, make me happy that was designed to go underwater. But anything that you need to put with move objects on your mermaids and the swimmers, the scuba divers, they cannot interact with. They're just there. Like if you put a toilet down there, they can't use it. It's just an object that's taking up space. 
Now we've gone into Bio Debug and there's different things available. Now fish spawners, just look, read the name of the spawner to see. For example, there's underwater sharks and there's surface sharks and there are non-clickable fish. The first spawner in that of the fish spawners spawns fish that look like you can catch them but you can't. So if you don't want fish swimming around there that you can't catch, well don't put that spawner in. So you just pick what you want. Now the gardening plants and seed spawners, there's only one available under Island Paradise and that's the kelp. It's just ordinary kelp, it's not the mermaidic kelp. But you can plant that and I plant it. My mermaids actually eat that when they're underwater. They can harvest it and if they get hungry they can pick the kelp and eat it. The other sims, I said, I don't think they can eat underwater, I haven't tried. Now, rock, gem and metal spawners. Underneath the sea you can use the ones that are there. Now be very careful because some of these are for land and some of them are for underwater. So just check the name of the different spawners. And they'll give you seashells, occasionally bottles and very rarely a, a Mr. Mariner gnome will pop up underwater for you to find. But it hardly ever happens with the gnomes. But it's mainly seashells and the occasional bottle. Then to place your treasure chests, you go into miscellaneous objects. There's two treasure chests there. One's for water and one's for land. So you want the water treasure chest to put underwater. None of the other things are really designed to go under the water. So that's it. That's where we got the boy from. But you don't want the boy down here. Leave the boy alone. You only want one of them. The only thing you can get from here is the underwater treasure chest. Now then you go out of filtering on Island Paradise and you find your foggy meter. Now you might find yours in a different spot. It's just a greenish coloured ball. And I've usually got to look for it for ages. And it's not usually in that spot for me so I don't know why it's appearing down there at the moment. It's usually in the middle somewhere. It's probably base game, so you could even filter on a base game if you want to try to restrict the amount of stuff you've got to look through. Control, shift and click is what you need to do to get the fog emitter menus up. The only part that I'm going to show you here is how to set the effect. Now you can do a Google search on Sims 3 fog emitter codes and you will find one. If you get one that takes you up to into the future you'll get it'll you'll have all of the codes. It's just a text file and save it on your hard drive so you've got it because there are literally tens of thousands of them and they do everything. These are the only five that I've used here. EP10 Ocean Light Rays, EP10 Fish Ocean Outer FX, EP10 Minnow School A, EP10 Minnow School B. You don't you need to use all of the minnows if you don't want to. They're just there if you want to use them. EP10 Minnow School C. And that is all of the fog emitters that I have used. The ocean light rays provides all the light effects in the ocean. And the others are just special effects that you can see things swimming around you or whatever. It's well worth e experimenting with fog emitters. I'm going to be using them in my the McFluff story to have all sorts of magical effects, bubbles and things. Now, treasure chests. Control shift click on the treasure chest. Actually, usually it's not that one's been opened, but you can see what I'm doing here. Shift, control, click, and it gives you the menu, and then you can assign the treasure. And I haven't given you a picture of the treasure, but there's a list of treasures that you can choose from. And just have a look through. And you also can set the skill level for the treasure chest as well, so that they can't open it unless they get a high enough diving skill. With the dive caves, there's two types of dive caves. You set the travel destination. To do that you probably need to have more than one dive lot 
or tell them to go to a spot that you've named somewhere else in your world. And set the scuba skill requirements to get to that destination. And also set the name of the cave so that you can actually use that as a destination from another location. See, there's another dive cave at the end there. And you can see the rocks and some of the things I've placed, including the spawners. The sea life spawners there. There's actually a shark spawner as well, but you can't see it. It's just sort of like a little pretty flower. And the seashell spawners as well. That the seashell spawners, they spawn the bottles and the shells and their gnomes occasionally. There's another picture, some more seashell spawners. A lot of this stuff is also recolorable, so you don't have to keep it the colour that you get. I think it's all recolorable actually. So you can just click on it and recolour it as usual. I haven't recolored anything, I've just accepted what was on offer. Next we're going to see a little bit of video and you can watch this video for as long as you like. Now that's what I... I never see the tentacles in my dive caves because I use Shimrod's dive cave fix. The problem with the dive caves is if you don't use the mod you can usually end up... there's a glitch and you'll end up on the beach somewhere when you go in them. And Shimrod says, if you see the tentacles, don't go in there because you're going to get a glitch. Now, I don't know if that's just with his mod or not because I never see tentacles with his mod. It's nothing as naughty as Sims Asylum. You've got to be a member or something to get in there. Or it could be Sims Logical, but I think it's naughty as Sims Asylum that you find his things. Now, you see, some of these places, like the dive caves and a few other things, can only be put on a flat surface. So I flattened a bit of the bottom of the ocean there to place my objects that need to be on a flat surface and afterwards I will adjust the terrain, just smooth the terrain around it when I've finished placing things that need a flat surface. Because if you try to place these it just says can't go on a slope. planted a bit of kelp around that as well. The treasure chest also can't go on a slope and some of the corals and various other things can't go on a slope either. I think the, even the kelp needs a bit of flat surface. This makes it more complicated but I don't like it looking flat like this. It's too artificial for me so after I've placed everything then I smooth the terrain and things move around and look more natural. I would have preferred to have that on an angle but I didn't flatten enough of the terrain and I didn't want to have too much flattened. I think I put a treasure chest in front of that as well because it would use the terrain. Now this huge rock, you can put things of any size underneath here that don't poke up above the surface. So just stick things there how you want them. I think I deleted that rock and then put it back again. I only used one of them because they're pretty big. I think they're one of those things that morph depending on what space they've got available. Plant a bit of kelp. You can hold the shift key down so you don't have to keep going back and grabbing another bit. See, now I've got to go back and grab it again. But if you hold the shift key down, you can just keep plonking it down anywhere that it'll go. I don't use move objects on if I can absolutely avoid it because it does interfere with how the sims interact with the objects and you can get ratting errors and all sorts of glitches. That dive cave need not that dive cave, that treasure chest needs flat area to go on. I've put a flat spot up there just for it. Now I've got to turn it around a bit, that like it placed like that. I'll come back later and smooth that terrain a bit so it looks a bit more natural.
The only thing for underwater that you're getting here is this one treasure chest. Be careful that you no don't grab the land version because it won't go underwater. See how things fade out in the distance? You can't see them in the distance. Makes them just come into view as you get up close to them when you're actually swimming around under here. That was nice. I could place that one on an angle. You got the problem of the terrain being... I couldn't place that name. I tried, but it wouldn't go. I would have needed move objects and then the sims couldn't have interacted with it. So I didn't want to bother with that. I will let them just spawn. You can put anything you want down here that's in your buy catalogue. It doesn't have to be designed to go underwater, but anything that you place using move objects, the sims don't interact with underwater. So anything that's got actions attached to it, such as a chair, they couldn't sit in a chair, they just could it'd just be there for something for them to look at maybe or swim around. I'll come and paint the terrain later. The reason I've left the painting the terrain till later is because I wanted to work out, I tend to only put the ocean floor paint in some places and I usually put it where I've placed corals and objects that might have got undersea life growing around it. Put a few rocks around. They actually stack on top of each other. So you can make all sorts of interesting arrangements with your rocks. I haven't bothered here, I've just placed things. Yeah, I'll put a dive cave up on the top as well. So there's three of them under in, in this particular dive lot now. I found that those things couldn't get placed. There's, there's two lots of sea um, starfish and one lot I can place underwater and the others I don't know what they're for. They won't go underwater so I just leave them alone. Maybe they're for the sand, place them on the beach or something. The same with the kelp. There's two different, different lots of there's toil kelp that you just use to decorate with. Not the sort they can pick. One of them I can place underwater and the other one I haven't found a use for yet. The sea grass. It'll go on, it needs to be on a flat surface pretty much. Because otherwise it just sticks out and grows into the air. Try to um, plant a bit of kelp around that if I can as well just to make the kelp a bit hidden. I'll just put a few more things around and then just play a bit of the video. All you're going to see from here on in is me placing a few things and I'll just chop most of that out actually. Here is the big kelp going in. One of them, there's two really tall lots of kelp. One works and one doesn't. It looks like I've got the one that doesn't at the moment. I quickly change and grab the other one and it actually tells you if it can be placed or not. You can see that I'm right on the edge of the lot there. Every time it goes red I've gone over the edge of the dive lot. This sort of fits on top of itself too if you wiggle it around a bit. I've, because this is not an EA built world that's meant for dive lots, often to the distance it's just blue depth in the distance. You don't really see any distant forests of kelp, which you could do a bit in Island Paradise or Isla Paradiso. So I tend to try to put a fair bit of this kelp, tall kelp, around the edges of the lot. You can put spawners in there and your swims, the sims can swim in there and catch fish and collect shells and find bottles and things. But you can take absolute hours doing your decoration. It's entirely up to how much you want to do it. And I have discovered that it looks a lot better after you've finished doing it and your sims start swimming around in there. Somehow or other it gets a bit of magic added when it's in live mode rather than in build or buy mode. So it all looks pretty disappointing when you're making it. It's like, oh, this is not very good. It looks terrible. 
and then you can put your sim in there swimming around and you think it's not too bad after all. It's because the fog emitters and other effects come into play that are not there when you're just placing objects. It's all pretty dull and nothing much happening. Yeah, just keep moving it until it goes green then you can plonk it down. I think I'll cut out the rest of the kelp placement and move on to the next bit. I'm going to spread a bit of seagrass around now. But see, it's just flat so you put it on a slope like that and it just sticks straight out into the water. Placing a bit of coral now, but you can see how its things are sticking out from the sides of those steep slopes. They look a bit silly, but you can come back afterwards and play with the terrain a bit more and smooth it out and make it come up so that it makes it look like those things are still growing out of the ground rather than just floating freely in the water. I actually, when I got my mermaid, mermaid diving around in here, I found that the deepest parts that I'd made were just too deep. It looked good, but it was just so hard to play with her down there. I found the same problem with my original efforts on the Cake Island dive lot. I got rid of the first dive lot altogether that I built and made another one and didn't take it down nearly as deep and it was much better to play. It's nice to have little bits to firm them to go down into, but as long as they're only little bits, not real deep. But this one, it does have a very deep area to, just to keep it level with the terrain outside. But then I took it down even deeper. Put a bit of a kelp around it. This is the harvestable kelp. The mermaids or the divers can come and harvest kelp. The mermaids are underwater and they get hungry. So there you go, that's your list that you've got. It's not a very long list, but if there's anything special you want your divers to be able to find, just look through what's there and um, they'll be able to come down and get it, providing they're at the skill level that you decide to set that lot for, or that treasure chest. You can make different diving skill levels for, to be able to open each treasure chest. And if you have lots of different dive lots, well then you can have a lot more fun when you're building them because with the treasure chests, you know, you can have different types of treasures in all the different dive lots and with your, I put a mosquito spawner in there as well. I have no idea why. It was a pretty silly thing to do. I don't think mosquitoes go around underwater. But they came with Island Paradise, so why not use it? And it went there. The, um, yeah, the dive caves, you set them to go to a different destination and if you, you name all your dive caves and you can have diving lots on different sides of the world and they can go into the cave on one spot and come out from the, of that cave in the next different part of the world. Here me smoothing it a bit now to make it look a bit more natural. It just looks better already doesn't it? And I haven't even painted the terrain paint yet. There was a little bit of really square bottom over there that I was trying to get rid of but it didn't want to go, so... This is the smoothing tool. You 
You can't really make the flat bits not flat, but you can make the ter terrain around them come up to meet or down to meet the level of the flat bits. So as you can see, you can make this last for as long as you like. Now you see in that water there how deep it is? That's where I had to actually make it a lot shallower because it was just too hard. To, it wasn't a pleasant experience playing. You want playing down there with your mermaids and you want to have fun and it's got to be relaxing and if you've got to struggle to stay down there all of the time it's not fun and it's not relaxing so I got rid of that deep 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 bit that you can see that's really deep there now and brought it up so it's close to the level where we're sitting at the moment so here I am painting the floor now it does give it a different appearance doesn't it because that light rays you can see there now that's actually the terrain paint for uh, sunlit tides and it's not from the light rays from the fog emitters once you've got the thing going the light rays from the fog emitters will play over this ocean floor and you will see all of the light dancing over the ocean floor and it is really pretty There's little crabs and rocks and different types of coral in this ocean floor paint. But I won't force you to watch all of that, so I'm going to cut this now and come back in when I'm doing something a bit more interesting. Just placing a few rocks, see how they can stack up on top of each other. And there's more rocks there. Some of the rocks that came with base game and other different expansion packs, some of those rocks will go underwater as well. So you just need to play around and experiment. See where they'll go. You might need to use move objects to put any particular rocks that you like that are not designed to go underwater. You can put them there, just your sims can't interact with them. Now I'm still in build mode but I've now got the community objects the miscellaneous under the miscellaneous tab of community objects and I've filtered on Island Paradise. And now these are all recolorable. You can do whatever you want with them. That's a little mermaid. I think it's the inconvenient mermaid. The steps. There's a big head there as well somewhere and all these bits and pieces from a shipwreck and so that's where all those undersea rubbish looks a bit like ceramics from a shipwreck this is that bit that I ended up raising up much higher after I tested it but I'm setting the treasure for that treasure chest now That's going to give me a plum bob painting. Should go and get that. I don't know what it looks like. There's a cannon on the floor already. Some bottles scattered on the sea floor. Sea floor, floor debris, I think it's called. There's an old propeller and a piece of a boat. It's, I think it's called most of a boat. And um, the other wheel, boat's wheel and an anchor as well that you can just scatter around just to make things look interesting. You could probably use move objects to s put things down there amongst the kelp if you really wanted to. That's that head. I think I chose a different colour for it. But you can still recolour it. You don't have to chip accept the colours that it comes with. Trying to find a spot that looks good. So 
So when I finished fiddling with all the bits and pieces like that, I added some spawners. You see the pretty flower on that spawner? That's the underwater shark spawner. So that's the shark that your swim sims will have shark fight with. Or you can fight with the upper sharks as well, the sharks that are above on the surface. But that's the underwater shark spawner. It's a little flower. I've only put one down there. I don't want a dive lot swarming with sharks, but if you want a dive lot swarming with sharks, put as many shark spawners down there as you like. Now I'm setting up that dive cave. I didn't give it a name yet because I've only got one dive lot in sunlit tides and so no one's going to be going. I suppose there's three dive caves in this dive lot. I could actually make them bounce from one dive cave to the next. That's that underwater sea life spawner. That's where you can't see the shark spawner. I put it over the top. So here's the seashell spawners. And then we'll do some fog emitters. Seashell, bottle and occasional, very rarely, gnome, underwater gnome, Mr. Mariner, gnome spawners. Now you take off your filter, you're in the by debug miscellaneous, take off your Island Paradise filter and grab your fog emitter. It's a sort of a bluish, greenish sort of a shiny little ball. But you could park a car under here if you wanted to, but you have to use move objects. And the Sims wouldn't be able to drive around in it, it'd just be something to... I suspect that gives you the appearance of things happening in the ocean nearby but not on the lot. Now here's the minnow ones, EP10 minnow school A, B and C. I think they're slightly different looking minnows that dart around the dive lot. If you just accept the default, the default um, visual effect code, it's just fog. This is where the, you know, the rainbows that the uni when the unicorns are drinking from the water, that rainbow comes up, that's a fog emitter. And the train in France, you can have that going around your world, if, but you've got to find the codes. The way to get your codes is to download that list. You'll find, if you search on Google, you'll find that people have done catalogues of fog emitter code na codes with what they produce, you know, what effect they produce. And also you can set them with triggers if you play with tombs and you do, and you, you know how to set triggers. Well, you can in connect fog emitters to triggers. I'm going to use them as bubbles in my McFluff story in my videos. I haven't got to that point yet because I've just got the sculptors making ice sculptures. And when a bit later in the story I'll be setting those sculptures up in a different lot and they'll have bubbles and things and coloured lights around them just for fun. It's supposed to be a magical fantasy story, that one. So, which who is learning or l trying to find out how to turn her cats human and it's the story of her life and her descendants or her not her descendants she doesn't have any descendants she has friends who have descendants who take up her cause and 
eventually, after many generations, have success and they start converting cats into humans and they have humans walking around with tabby cat hair all over them and cat whiskers and that sort of thing. That's what the, where the story is going anyway. That's why I've got the mermaids on Cake Island because the McFluffs are going to live on Cake Island eventually. They're in Hidden Springs at the moment with my current episodes. But they'll go to Cake Island and there's all sorts of strange sims living on Cake Island. I've already got some fawns living there. That's human sims that look like fawns. And I'm building a mermaid house and dive lots on Cake Island for the where the mermaids can live and the will to see them wandering around town occasionally. This actually the world the one I've chosen Scott is not populated, so I'm populating it with interesting sims. I'm just hoping that the mermaids, if they're left on their own, will stay mer as mermaids. I've given them a couple of huge swimming pools and they're going to have dive lots, so, you know. We'll see what happens. See, there's a ship's wheel, and just there, that came from buy mode in community objects, miscellaneous tab, filtered on Island Paradise. Stop that, it's getting a little bit tedious. So I placed a bit more stuff and did some more terrain painting and then saved it. And uh, now we can go into testing mode. You can see the light rays there from the fog emitters and there are things spawning. That's uh, underwater sea life, a hermit crab that she can catch. There's a fish over there that she's going to catch. She got very hungry while she was down here and, and I actually got her to eat some kelp. In a, one of the versions of my Sunlit Tides dive lots that I built when I was trying to work out my method for getting them to not jump in the air, which took me about two or three days full all day to do, I uh, sent one of my mermaids down and I only had one mermaid in my save like this one, different mermaid, and all of a sudden there was another mermaid swimming around with us, so yes, Sunlit tides will generate their own mermaids for you that belong to the world itself. So there you go. I was very surprised because I thought that you could probably only get mermaids visiting the lot like that if you were work playing in Alan Paradiso, but no, it's not the case. I definitely had a visiting mermaid that I'd never seen before turned up in my one of my earlier attempts at making dive lots in stone, sunlit tides. Yeah, according to Shimrod, do not go into a dive cave if the tentacles are visible because that's when you're going to get tossed to the beach. Whether or not you can go in there when the tentacles are not visible and not get tossed to the beach without his mod, I don't know. keep saying his but could be her I don't know Shimrod gonna catch that puffer fish I like the way the mermaids go down so gracefully when they're going to catch something they so just caught quite a bit of stuff and harvested some kelp so that is the place as I originally did it but I found that that deep, deep, deep part was just too deep and it was so hard to stay down there that in the end I decided it was just a painful experience. Betty. 
is not a mermaid, but her name is Betty Mermaid. I told her to come as well. There was a townie down here with her as well at one point. All that coral looks a bit bright. You can actually recolour all of it to make it whatever colour you like. And even those lumps of rock there, you know, the mermaid rock and that big head, they can be recoloured as can the steps. So you can just set it up however you want it to look. This is my first look at my attempt at decorating this dive lot and it needed some more work. But you've got the idea now I think of how to build them and how to decorate them. So where you go from here is entirely up to you. So I'm just going to say thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've got something out of it. This is the end of my dive mode or dive lot making and decorating videos. So it's all up to you now to go and do whatever you choose to do with your own dive lots. I just say that it's easier as far as I'm concerned to build your own from scratch and to try to place a dive lot from a different world because of the issues with the terrain that you're putting it into and the depth of the water. Bye bye for now and thank you for watching.